Thank you, Stefan. And, uh, and indeed, uh, uh, I'm going to share uh, a little bit of those convictions. I've called this presentation the point of purpose. So we are lucky at Unilever because we actually you know, live on the shoulder of giants. The very first brands of uh, the, the lever side, at least, of the business, you know, the side that has given the name to the company, uh, were actually brands with a social conscience. If you think about it, brands like Sunlight, brands like Lifebuoy, were ambitiously all about making basic health and hygiene become commonplace at a time when, you know, in Britain, it was not the common norm. And uh, even the names of those brands, Sunlight, bringing sunlight to the people, you know, Lifebuoy, saving lives, you know, where already the program, the social program of that brand encapsulated in, in the name of the brand. So these brands inspire us, guide us in, in our journey. And, uh, and they continue to live today and pursue that mission, in particular in the developing and emerging economies, to actually make health and hygiene become the norm, not just for you know, us, but for the 7 billion, the 9, the 10 billion people who, uh, who are you know, going to live on, on planet Earth. But at the same time, this question of purpose is really something that continues to inspire us, not just for those brands that actually we've inherited and that are really embedding a social conscience, but also you know, for all our brand portfolio. And so the question is fundamentally, why do we do this? And we do it to start with because it makes sense. It makes sense business-wise. I mean, a lot of the brands that I'm going to talk to you about are some of our fastest growing brands. They're part of our billion euro brands. Uh, you know, the Stengel 50 index talks about, and it does include several of our brands, like Dove, does talk about you know, the, the commercial benefit of having a strong purpose at the core of your brand. So that's the first reason why we do it. Why we do it is because we believe it's the right thing to do for the business. But it's also the right thing to do for society. It's the right thing to do for the planet. And uh, it does actually represent a more of a moral conviction and obligation also at the same time to actually contribute to making the world a better place to improve the life of the people we serve. That's why we at Unilever, and you heard Martin talk about uh, Paul Polman, we actually put um, at the heart of our business model the sustainable living ambition of the company. And that's also why we actually, about two and a half years ago, we did the same with our marketing model, rethinking the way we do marketing. We called it crafting brands for life to actually put you know, people, brands with purpose and, uh, and magic, as we say, but really putting purposeful brand at the heart of our marketing uh, strategy. So the very first thing that you know, is at the start of everything is fundamentally, uh, and I really believe, and this is maybe more Mark Mathieu talking than necessarily uh, the SVP of, uh, of Unilever, but the reality is we need to forget about consumers. Consumers were a bad idea to start with. You know, consumers are dead. You are not consumers. You are people. You're only consumers a very short fraction of, of your day. And you don't want to be considered, to be told, to be you know, labeled as a consumer. We continue to, all our vocabulary talks about them in a way which is not considering them as you know, human beings. We call them target groups. I've said that many times as if we wanted to shoot them. You know, this, this name we give them, the audience, you know, the people formerly known as the, the audience is no longer listening. And so we really need to, and it's important internally for our marketeers, it's important for the, the moral um, approach that we have when we market our brands, when we position our brand, is really thinking about people as human beings. And as I often say, marketers and advertisers are human beings too. So it's all of us you know, rediscovering the importance of humanity in, in the work we do. And then, very importantly, embed that in our pursuit, in the pursuit of our brands, because unless we understand a fundamental human insight, 
at the very heart of the strategy of our brands, then we won't unlock a purpose. We, don't, we can't do great work that actually has you know, a commercial uh, reward, but also does indeed tackle something meaningful for the people that actually we serve. And so I'd like to share with you one of the, I think, best encapsulation of, um, of um, an insight, a human insight, that actually I think is at the heart of what made Dove you know, be what it is today. This, this brand that fundamentally believes in the fact that women shouldn't consider beauty as a sort of anxiety, uh, but much more as a sort of confidence, is something which was not always the case. Actually, Dove was not a brand that was born like Lifebuoy or like Sunlight with a purpose. Uh, it was a brand that was born with a wonderful product, but the purpose, this whole idea of self-esteem, came along the way. And so um, the, the video I'm going to share with you is interesting because I really think it does capture uh, a human insight, the reality that as a father of two girls, I have experienced firsthand the number of times I, when I had little girls, I wanted to make pictures of them and they loved it. And then one day, they didn't love it anymore. Peekaboo, I see you Sitting in the corner, looking kinda blue Don't you try to hide from you know who Peekaboo, peekaboo, I see you Peekaboo, I love you Better make your mind up that you love me too Cause you're gonna marry you know who Peekaboo, peekaboo, I love you So I wanted to share that with you rather than, than sharing with you uh, Dove sketches, which I guess you've seen many times, uh, because really at the heart of what we're able to do uh, on a campaign like, uh, like Dove uh, sketches is this fundamental interest in people and this fundamental pursuit of you know, all our marketeers on the brand to actually drive a, a, you know, beauty as a source of confidence for women to avoid actually that our society continues to pursue uh, a, a model where we continue to make, um, uh, to make uh, beauty a source of anxiety. So that's the first thing, is stop thinking about consumers, stop thinking about marketers, stop thinking about advertisers, think about human beings. And that's at the core of, I think, you know, uh, solving the very first block in this pursuit of, uh, of purpose at the core of the business. Then the second thing about, uh, about purpose is, um, is the fact that a brand without a purpose today is just a beer board. And uh, that unless we actually create uh, something meaningful at the heart of our brand, we continue to talk to people as if we actually, uh, again, to take back uh, David's expression, they give a shit, when in reality, we are talking about our own you know, story. We're inventing a myth. It's uh, this evolution of marketing from a world where we could tell people more or less what we wanted and hope through mass media that we're going to convince them. Where today, we really need to put at the heart of our brands this idea that fundamentally, there is a, a fundamental human truth, not just a product truth. There is a point of view that we have. And then, if we do a good job, then they can actually you know, um, expect to embrace it and to share it with one another. And it's this idea that we are playing quite with, which is this idea of shared belief. It's no longer about, you know, I believe in this and I'm going to impose it in you, but I want to believe in the same thing that you believe and trying to create a community of, uh, of thoughts, a proximity of thought between the, the people we serve, the tribes that, uh, that consume our brands, and, uh, and the, the, the convictions of a brand. And, and this has evolved fundamentally because of the world we live in. Um, Martin talked about it, the, the change due to technology, uh, the, uh, the change due also to, um, to you know, communication and the fact that there is a, a, a fundamental change of the trust between people 
and cooperations between people and brands has actually changed drastically uh, the, 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 the acceptance of people to just say, yes, uh, I'm ready to buy the story of your brand. People want to have you know, something that they can believe in that matters to them. And that's the other thing that we are trying to do. And then the last thing, and again, Martin mentioned that, is this idea of unless we do something, if we continue to just you know, talk about our brands, to talk at people, as opposed to do something that matters to their everyday life, then uh, why bother? I often say, you know, a brand without a purpose, well, basically, you know, you just by saying this, you've answered already the fact that it shouldn't exist. And so um, here, I, I could have, I, I was going to talk to you about some of the amazing brands in action where we have some great work. For instance, with Lifebuoy, we really are on journeys in multiple countries uh, where um, we're actually saving lives and uh, we don't market selling soap, we market basically hand washing and teaching hand washing in people. Or on a brand like Domestos, where we actually, again, in many countries are actually working hard together with some of our foundation partners to, uh, to give people access to toilet for people who basically don't have that as uh, their everyday life. But I wanted to share with you an example that uh, being here in Australia, I actually discovered working with the local team because I think it's, it's really important. It does communicate the change of the kind of marketing that we need to do. And, uh, and the fact that marketing is no longer about putting an ad on TV, but it's much more doing an experiment, doing a program that actually changes fundamentally people's lives. And so I'm going to let you watch two minutes of a video of a TV program, fundamentally a TV program that you know, we didn't have anything to do. We created an initiative and uh, the TV actually picked it up. And it shows the importance of what a marketer, what an advertiser can actually do for the people we serve. Welcome back. More than half the adult population of this country suffers from high cholesterol. It's a massive problem and one town has taken a unique approach to tackling it. Come on, let's go. It's over 7.8. It's a big numbers. Your cholesterol is greater than 7.8. And it's gotten out of hand. My doctor wants to put me on a medication for cholesterol. Carlos knows why. Fatty meats and, and, and things like that. So too, um, Sandra. I like butter. And Diane. Dips, because I do love the dips. Heart disease is Australia's number one killer, more than all the cancers combined. And high cholesterol is the cause of the problem. Somewhere between 40 and 50% of the population are above desirable levels. Take a look in the fridge at the supermarket. Those cholesterol-reducing margarines are everywhere. The maker of one of them, Flora Proactive, has just finished a three-week health experiment to prove their effectiveness. In the town of Floraville, for a bit of theatrics. I'm grandmother of 18, great-grandmother of nine, and I want to stay alive. That's why I'm here today. Hello, Sam. Robin has been working hard to get her cholesterol down. It was 7.2. Today, her test came in at 5.5, but she wants it lower, along with nearly everyone else in here. My reading today is 7.31. They were asked to use the margarine for three weeks, so everyone got spreading. Fingers crossed it'll uh, bring my cholesterol down. My name's Desley and my cholesterol's gone from 7.6 to 6.4 in three weeks. And guess what? And my cholesterol was over 7.8 and this week it's 6.6, .6, 15% reduction. Over 80% of people who took part lowered their cholesterol, including Carlos, who went from 7.8 to 6.8. I wasn't expecting that much of a drop, no. Sandra, who's gone from 7s into 6s. My cholesterol has come down 8% in three weeks. And Robin, whose cholesterol dropped 13% in just three weeks. I was stunned because a couple of years ago the medicos tried to put me on cholesterol medication and I couldn't take it. It gave me all sorts of side effects. By lowering the cholesterol, you can reduce your risk of heart disease by 30 or 40 percent. Nice Professor Peter Clifton at the Baker Institute in Adelaide is a recognised leading expert on all things cholesterol 
and an advocate of these margarines. It's far easier than many other strategies for lowering cholesterol. But you must consume at least 25 grams a day. All you need to do is use one rounded tablespoon of fluoroproactive every day. If you don't, then research has indicated you will only get a minimal benefit, probably not worth the extra cost of these margarines. So cholesterol lowering medication may be the answer for you. Now for some bad news you may not know. Stress can increase your cholesterol. Students, at exam time you'll find their cholesterol will go up and then it will fall again when the exams are finished. But don't stress, because there is such a thing as good cholesterol, found in fish, nuts, porridge and avocados, and it flushes out the bad cholesterol, along with, it seems, just a spoonful of margarine. This fundamentally changed the work we do as marketers. And it fundamentally changed the approach that, you know, it's not just putting another ad on TV, but it's really doing something fundamental that actually impacts the lives of real people. And, uh, and this idea of, you know, real people and real results is at the heart of, uh, of the proactive um, uh, brand strategy. But it's really about putting purpose into action on a brand that is engineered fundamentally in its DNA uh, to, to make that a reality. Um, so what I wanted is to give you a little bit of a sneak peek on the how do we do this. And, uh, and it's not easy because you have brands that are easy, that have it as part of their product DNA, but I'll cover in a couple of minutes some brands which are a little bit more difficult to, uh, to approach with a purpose. So if you take a brand like, uh, like Ben & Jerry, which uh, how many of you know Ben & Jerry? So, I mean, it's a pretty uh, uh, well-known brand. Again, Ben & Jerry is, is lucky because it's a brand that was born with a purpose. So we actually use what we call, we've rethought the, the way we position our brands inside Unilever, and we use what we call a brand love triangle a brand to, to actually articulate the product truth, to really start with the idea that yeah, Ben & Jerry's is basically a product that is based on values. It's a values-based business, the best possible uh, ice cream made in the best possible way. But then we actually go and we try to find a, a real human truth. You know, the fact that fundamentally people do aspire, you know, to a world with more justice and prosperity for all, and that when they get involved, actually it makes them feel good. And based on that, we say, so who are we really talking about as a brand? And we say, you know, basically it's the aspiring activist uh, in all of us. And that leads us to say, well, actually a brand like Ben & Jerry, and I'm taking this brand because I know you know it, uh, is actually this idea that fundamentally values-based business with a little bit on top of it of, you know, lighthearted fun can actually tackle and help us tackle some of the most difficult, you know, issues of society. And that's why a brand like Ben & Jerry ends up you know, getting engaged with issues like same-sex marriage, which are not necessarily you know, very easy for a brand to tackle, but because it fundamentally has you know, articulated it as part of its purpose, as part of its brand strategy. Um, one of the brands that very often gets also uh, discussed when we talk about purpose is uh, you say, OK, Dove is doing a great job. What about Axe? Axe is much more of a frivolous brand, and it's a brand that has you know, far less of a purpose at its core. Some would argue you know, the reality is Axe is the masculine side of Dove. You know, it gives guys confidence. Having said that, we've worked quite hard to actually continue to, to push this brand to be you know, much more strong in terms of purpose. This is what led, and I know that John Hegarty probably later is going to talk to you about going to, uh, to space with Axe. But more recently, we've moved the brand this year in a campaign that's all about peace, which is actually, again, starting to engage the brand in something you know, more meaningful uh, in terms of you know, using confidence, but not to the point of violence. And I want to share with you, again, an initiative from Australia which uh, goes even further to try with a partnership with the, um, with the Red Cross to actually go to the extreme side 
of confidence and violence, which is actually the issue of, uh, of people in need of blood. And I think, again, it's, uh, it's really very interesting to see, for me, as a global marketer, when I come you know, as far as it gets to Australia, to see our purpose gets turned into action by our local marketeers in something as meaningful as the video that I'm going to share with you from uh, this rugby union um, uh, player here in Australia. I've had my fair share of battles. To survive, you need determination, commitment, courage. But I'm one of the fortunate. I can choose how I fight my battles. Others, they aren't so lucky. For them, life can become a daily battle for survival or an unforeseen fate. This battle to save lives can never be fought alone. The Red Cross Blood Service needs 27,000 donations every week. And there's a shortage of young men giving blood. Together with Lynx, this is a call to arms for men like you. Lynx has always brought people together. And now it's for a cause like no other. Take a pledge to donate blood. It's the most selfless display of love you can make. Your single blood donation can help save three lives. Love is in your blood. Pledge it. So I think it's a very interesting example of something where you take a brand like Axe, which is all about confidence, uh, but at the same time you push it into a place which is probably a little bit uncomfortable. And, uh, and I see John who nods. It's probably uncomfortable for him who leads the brand because it, it's not 100% natural. But again, that's using the power that we have as marketers, as advertisers, to actually push the boundary and make purpose both commercially rewarding but also really matter for, uh, for the people we serve. So I'd like to finish with one more thing which has not been launched in Australia. But uh, the ultimate pursuit of purpose for Unilever is actually something we're doing with the corporate brand, the Unilever brand. And we started in five markets last year on uh, Universal Children's Day on the 20th of November, a, a day that the UNICEF proclaimed for, uh, to preserve the rights of the generations to come, to actually engage our corporate brand to pursue not the mission of our ancestors to make cleanliness commonplace, but to make sustainable living commonplace and start to you know, change the paradigm from the future is doom and gloom to uh, the future is actually bright and engage the totality of our brands into actually taking those purposeful pursuits that they have started individually to collectively create change at the scale of, uh, of, of a corporation like Unilever. Engaging multiple partners, or you know, foundation partners, our retail partners, our media partners in those five markets, which were India, Indonesia, UK, US, uh, and Brazil, to actually turn around uh, and, and drive a, um, a change of perspective and engage people into action around you know, this idea that small actions matter and that we can all participate, we all need to change our behavior if we want to make sustainable living a reality. And so I'm going to leave you with a film which we did for this, which is really the tip of the iceberg. There is a whole set of activities in the markets where we've launched to actually uh, engage people in sustainable living challenges and to make them uh, really take actions and make sustainable living you know, easy uh, for every day. But I'll share with you this three-minute film, which was meant to actually make people reconsider um, the way we behave at a moment where we open to change, which is fundamentally the birth of a child. We are scared. We are scared seeing the present. present we, we are scared for the future. You realize that you're someone else's protector. Maybe there are 
there's something you should know about the world in which your child will live. Something real. Something that's already happening. Every day, more and more food is being grown with a revolutionary method. Care. And new technologies will make clean drinking water available to hundreds of millions. So this will probably be the famous water war they speak so much about. And illnesses that today affect millions of children a year will be prevented by simple everyday products. Your child could have more possibilities of having a healthier heart than any living person today. And the same chance of a broken heart. No one can escape that. And by the time they find the right person, our children will have better chances of meeting their great-grandchildren than we ever did. Breathe calmly. Bring your child into this world. There has never been a better time to create a brighter future for everyone on the planet. For those yet to come. Where I come from, you don't get to see clean water like that. The world needs more good guys, and I like to think our, our baby will be one of the good guys. <laughs> but we have to change for them first. Right. We might not see it, we but won't maybe see it, our great-grandchildren great will see <laughs> it. Or great, great <laughs> With the characters in this story, <laughs> how the story pans out is based on how we behave in this story. So, yeah, we definitely, it's up to us to make a change, absolutely. So that's it. That's all I wanted to share with you. It's an ongoing journey. We continue. I mean, clearly purpose is something which we've embedded at the heart of our marketing strategy, you know, making sustainable and social impact uh, at the heart of our you know, business model is, uh, is one of the things that uh, under Paul Pullman we're actually uh, driving. And, um, and clearly we're committed to this to be one of the companies that will continue to push it across all our brands. So, um, and we need your help. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Let's take a few minutes out to take a, a few questions from the audience. Just to remind you, uh, share your questions through the app, and we'll be happy to discuss some of them here uh, during all the day. Mark, um, to, uh, specific to the purpose um, which, which you embed now in the marketing of Unilever, how much of a sort of new energy and new drive has it generated in your marketing teams to be embracing purpose on such a scale? Well, I, I think that it does change the way our marketeers get up in the morning. So uh, fundamentally, uh, this whole idea that uh, you know, consumers are not just consumers, that human being, and that our brands you know, need to matter to their everyday life and have a, a positive social impact or environmental impact changes the way I certainly look at myself in the mirror in the morning, and I think a lot of our people do. I mean, what uh, you've seen on Axe here is actually something we would never have done three or five years ago. And, uh, and I think that uh, it, it really changes the, the paradigm um, of marketing. You've heard me talk before about making marketing noble again. I think it, uh, it moves us from marketing as uh, at the service of the bottom line to uh, also marketing at the service of uh, you know, something a little bit more, more important uh, than just the bottom lines and something that you know, can actually merge. You were talking here about, uh, at the end of your presentation, about Project Sunlight. And for the first time, you have actually the Unilever voice, which, is, which becomes actually the, the sort of unifying element in, 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 in the approach. Um, how much of a challenge is it actually to be, um, to be encompassing brands with very different purposes, and some of them having 
not necessarily purpose at the core of the DNA. How, 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 do, you, how do you get a coherence and how do you get a Unilever corporate voice on that basis? Yeah, so the, the beauty is that we have lots of initiatives that actually already have purpose embedded in, uh, in, in their brand. And we also have uh, multiple moments in the years where those get already activated. So it's actually creating almost an umbrella approach. Um, in parallel, we also have our Unilever Sustainable Living Plan with all the commitments that uh, we are pushing down more and more through each of our brands. So it really brings together you know, the, the corporate sustainability strategy, how it gets implemented in each and every one of our brands, and now we add up the totality of the initiatives. So for instance, between September and November every year, there is Global Hand Washing Day, which is a live boy initiative. There is Royal Toilet Day, which is a domestos initiative. There is a, a World Self-Esteem Day, which is a Dove-supported initiative. All of this is part of our commitment to improve the health and well-being of a billion people on the planet. OK, one last question, Mark. Um, if there was one piece of advice you'd like to leave the audience with, no, the theme of the, of the day here is growth. One piece of advice in terms of leveraging growth going forward, what would that be? Yeah, so to me, what's really important, and the reason I showed the uh, proactive example, because proactive is maybe an easier example for all of us than when I show, for instance, uh, sunlight, which is about helping kids reach the age of five in India or in Africa which is sometimes a little bit far away from our everyday preoccupation. But when you have at the heart of your brand something as clear as the program that we saw on Proactive, then you do not have to sell margarine ever again. What you fundamentally are selling, what you're marketing, is actually you know, heart health. And uh, it's collateral reduction. And it's, it's the happiness that you see on the face of those people. And along the way, guess what? The business results, the growth of the brand is tremendous because you actually are pursuing purpose and growth at the same time, but purpose comes first, not just you know, pursuing the bottom line first and then trying to add up a little bit of purpose you know, ingredients. That doesn't work. That's not what we want to do. What we really want to do is make sure that purpose comes at the very beginning of the brand strategy and that then it serves the growth strategy. And that's what I would invite you to, to try to do is to ask yourself, am I adding purpose as an afterthought? Or, you know, is it the, at the heart of what my marketers, what my communication partners are asked to do day in, day out? Thank you very much, Mark. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Matthew.